it's lovely to join you for collective worship today. We're going to be continuing to think about the life of David. But first, let's gather our thoughts as we place our worship symbols on the table. So I'm going to take the Bible. And the Bible reminds us of God the Father. And so we pray together. Father, we are here. We are here for you. The cross reminds us of Jesus, God's Son. And as we place the cross, we say, Jesus, we are here. We are here for you. And I've got a candle here. And as I light the candle, we remember God, the Holy Spirit. And so we pray, Holy Spirit, we are here. We are here. You. So I've got a story for you today, a story about how David became king. So God sent his prophet Samuel to go to visit a man called Jesse and Jesse lived in Bethlehem and God said to Samuel today I want you to anoint so to put oil on the head, you've seen that probably done at baptisms, to anoint the person that I have chosen to be king. So Samuel went and he took his little bag and he put his oil in it, ready to anoint that person. And he went to see Jesse and he said, could I please see your sons? Because God has chosen them to be, one of them, to be king. So Jesse was very excited and he called his sons and said, come on, come along, come along, we've got to meet Samuel. So the sons came along. So the first one came and he was very tall and strong. And Samuel looked at him and thought, well, he'd make a very good king. And God said, no, not this one. So he looked at the next son and he wasn't quite so tall, but he was very strong and handsome. And Samuel thought, well, he'd make a very good king. And God said, no, this isn't the one I've chosen. So the next son, son number three, Samuel looked at him and he was very athletic, very good at running and jumping. And so he was quite strong and fit. And Samuel thought, well, he'd make an excellent king. And God said, no, no, I haven't chosen this one. Then he looked at the fourth son and he was very clever. And Samuel thought, well, it must be him. This one must be king because he's very clever. God said, no, I haven't chosen him because he's very clever. And then Samuel looked at the fifth son, so five boys so far. And he was very good at singing and musical things. And so Samuel thought, well, this one would be a perfect king. God said, no, no, I haven't chosen this. So then he looked at the sixth son and then he looked at the seventh son. Seven boys all together. There were no more. There were no more sons. But God said, no, there is one that I still need to see. There is one that I have chosen. So Samuel said to Jesse, have you got another son? And Jesse said, well, I have, but he's just a boy, a scrap of a lad, and he's out in the fields. And Samuel said, well, I better see him. So they sent for David and David came in from the fields, washed his face, smoothed down his hair, straightened his clothes, and he stood in front of Samuel. And Samuel looked at all the seven boys that he'd already seen, who were all so clever and so impressive. And then he looked at David, who was just a young boy. And God said, this is the one that I have chosen to be king. And I have chosen him because his heart is pure. And then God said to Samuel, and Samuel told everyone that God doesn't judge people from their appearance. He looks into our hearts. He sees what's really there. And so Samuel was chose David to be king because God saw that Samuel's heart was good. So that's how David was chosen. He wasn't chosen because he was good at running wasn't chosen because he was good looking. He wasn't chosen because he was really clever. He wasn't chosen because he could sing really well. As he grew up, 
He was able to do a lot of those things, but God chose him because he had a good heart, a pure heart, and that he would follow God. I wonder how you judge people. So when you meet somebody new, maybe when you've got a new teacher, I wonder what it is you think of when you first meet somebody. We do tend to look at how, see how people look, don't we? We judge people on their appearance. But that doesn't tell us everything we need to know, is it? So I want you to think for a moment or two about your best friend or about somebody in your family that you like a lot someone that you really love and care about. Why do you love them? Why are they special to you? Now I want you to think about what is special about you. What's really special and what makes you a special person? What do you think God really loves about you? Have a think. Maybe you can tell your teacher or tell the person sitting next to you what's special about you. So God isn't so interested in what we look like or how clever we are or how strong we are or how sporty we are. God isn't interested in our beautiful clothes. He isn't interested in our fashion. God isn't interested in whether we're in with the right group of people. God is interested in what's in our hearts. So God wants to know if we love him. God wants to know if we love our family. God wants to know if we care for each other. I'm going to invite you to join me in a little prayer now. So you can put your hands together and close your eyes. You know I like to clasp my hands together. I know Mrs Hodges has had us praying like this, hasn't she? But she's been quite clever. I've enjoyed that. Um, or you might like to look at the candle. I don't know if you can see the light a bit better. But let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you that you know everything that's in our hearts. We thank you that you see all the special things about us that you love us for who we really are. We pray that we will see each other for who we really are, that we will be able to love and care for each other because we can see the special people that we are, that you have made. We thank you for your love for us. Amen. So let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So I'd like to wish you a really happy rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.